Thank you, Krista, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, hi, friends. I'm going to share with you certain slides as to have a thought process on what exactly I believe are the ways going forward and what we need to keep in mind in terms of our learnings from the uh, pandemic per se. See, this pandemic is growing with each passing day and you still don't have much clarity on how things are going to effectively work. To give you an example, in Delhi today, the government has virtually opened up the entire capital once again. At a time when the infections in India have grown more than 100,000, the uh, state government decides to open up with very minor uh, restrictions, which only goes to show that is it going to be ethical for countries to start opening up once there is already uh, impending danger of infections. Look at some of these new developments. These are developments that have taken place in the last uh, couple of days to tell you how, whether it's ethical or not. Well, the fact remains is if you are going to attack a critical information infrastructure in UK in the form of electricity and you expect that to be ethical, surely that will not be ethical. Similarly, when one uh, looks at uh, the demand for ransom by hackers after cyber attacks, is it ethical? I don't think so. But then that's the ground reality. Look at uh, this attack that's happening at InterServe, where the focus is on hospital construction firms. Look the kind of deviation and the maliciousness with which the cyber hackers are targeting their attacks. Look at this uh, latest and the biggest uh, cyber attack that's happened on a big law firm. That's happening and that's only going ahead and uh, uh, shall I say defending all super speciality and celebrity clients uh, in Hollywood. <coughs> so major cybersecurity breaches are happening all over the world. And uh, it can just be a small uh, mistake as this staff member at the NCW service actually opened up a phishing email and exposed the entire network. Or it could be a well-focused cyber attack causing a worldwide shutdown of systems and operations for this company per se. Okay, so it's not just only about targeting your systems. It's also targeting your medical data. Your research that you as a country are doing in, term, in times of coming up with a new virus uh, vaccine. So already US is saying that China is hacking into its coronavirus vaccines and testing data as tensions are continuing. On top of it, uh, we're also beginning to find that uh, privacy versus public health in a pandemic. What are the ethical trade-offs? Should the electoral politics prevail or should the health of citizens be considered on a far bigger pedestal? Well, can the coronavirus make the society more ethical? I'm not so sure. On the contrary, I'm beginning to see shortcuts being happening. Well, as per one estimate, by 2022, activists will expose the digital ethics abuse per se. So when you are expecting the protection and preservation of cybersecurity as an ethical process, and you find deviations from the said process, then clearly there is a disconnect between ethics and uh, coronavirus. Yes, the learnings will have to be that, yes, these disruptions are happening. They're not as per orderly norms of behavior, but then these are what the practical challenges uh, which will require to be facing. So I believe cybersecurity and ethics in education will have to go hand in hand as we move forward. Your work from home is the new normal. In fact, in the last two months, the world has made far more progress in terms of being digital than it did in almost one decade. But with these increasing cybersecurity breaches, is it ethical for an for, uh, employer to expect his employee to keep his work from home premises and devices secure? Is it ethical uh, for the employer to provide for the cybersecurity of these devices? Not very sure. Uh, is it ethical to expect that your privacy must be protected and preserved? Uh, should it be so done? And once it's not done, what's going to happen? Is it ethical to be cyber resilient in these pandemic times? These are questions that are begging for an answer. 
there's a need for regulating cybersecurity as part of ethical human behavior. But the various legal consequences of breaches of cybersecurity still need to be clarified. The world is getting increasingly focusing on more of digitally recognizing you and your moments. Face, your face will be your passport of the future. And that being so, facial recognition will be an unpleasant but a sure ground reality that COVID-19 is coming across. Is it ethical that more and more people are going to the dark net because they are finding themselves stifled on the uh, superficial net? Is it ethical to, for the governments to start regulating the dark net, specifically both legitimate and illegitimate activities happening therein? What kind of legal frameworks do we need to put in place? Big questions, again, no answers. But I thought at this juncture, I want to share with you certain learnings from the pandemic. The first learning number one, it will be ethical to come down very strongly against cyber criminals, again, engaged in increasing cyber crimes with strong hands. So you cannot say I will engage in cyber crime and expect a lenient, uh, very soft approach from law. And I think that principle is based on the principles of ethics per se. Principle number two, it will be ethical for coming up with effective strategies and mechanisms for fighting growing cybersecurity breaches because it's ethical to protect your own data, your own network. The, it's ethical to protect the confidential data that others have uh, given you for handling, processing, dealing, and therefore taking appropriate steps would be important uh, learnings from the pandemic. Learning number three, it's not ethical for nations to monitor people under the garb of COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 is providing a fascinating and very fertile ground for countries to start uh, constantly monitoring people under the garb of these COVID-19 apps, monitoring their movements, putting them in fear, panic, and uh, increasing their powers. But I believe that's neither a part of cyber ethics nor should be warranted by ethical behaviors as we go forward. Principle number four, it is not ethical for countries and governments to keep on centralizing and increasing the ambit of their powers under the garb of fight against COVID-19. I think it will also not be ethical to increasingly start usurping increasing power under the garb of fight against COVID-19. And COVID-19 should not be an excuse for moving towards an authoritarian regime. Hungary has told the world that it's possible for a country to pass a law empowering its uh, government to rule for an ad infinitum basis on the ground that not just COVID-19, but also subsequent waves of the infection have also to be appropriately fight, uh, fight uh, done an appropriate uh, fighting mechanism. Until such time that's not effectively done, the government should be in power. Principle number five, it will not be ethical for countries to come up with restrictions which have an impact upon the enjoyment of digital liberties of citizens. Today, internet has developed so much that taking your digital liberties for granted is a de facto default option. So in a scenario like this, I believe countries must respect the enjoyment of digital liberties of their netizens. Learnings number six, it will be ethical for countries to come together to find out source of COVID-19 as is currently being done at the World Health Organization. And yesterday, China has agreed to the international demand for an international probe to find out where did COVID-19 originate because it's no longer just a Chinese phenomenon. It's no longer just a regional phenomenon. But more than 213 countries territories and areas being impacted. This is the global pandemic, infodemic that we have never seen. Principle number seven, it will be ethical for countries to look at more international and bilateral cooperation for the purposes of exchanging information pertaining to the fight against COVID-19. No longer mere lip service is required to be done for cooperation mechanisms. It's a strange paradox that we are walking in ourselves in. The countries are becoming more and more powerful, and yet at the same time, it's going to be ethical for these powerful countries to start 
going ahead and uh, engaging in more international and bilateral cooperation mechanisms for exchange of information pertaining to the fight against COVID-19. Learning number eight, it will not be ethical for countries to perpetuate discrimination, especially against migrant workers and members of the population. Different countries are beginning to already start having a stepmotherly treatment for movement of migrant population. And that is itself giving rise to various new discriminative mechanisms and processes. And I believe these are neither ethical nor they are moral per se. Learnings number nine, it will be easy and it will be necessary to come up with cyber ethical foundations for the new cyber world order that's emerging. You can close your eyes, you can argue against it, but the fact remains is that the world has changed. Last 60 days, irreversible changes have happened and they're all contributing to the emergence of a new cyber world order that's going to await us once the fight against COVID-19 comes to a close. It will be a new change to ground reality in cyberspace. And I think therefore, trying to plan up for cyber ethical foundations of the new cyber world order post COVID-19, I believe should be an important thrust area for various stakeholders as we go forward. Learning 10, it will also be ethical to come up with appropriate standards and coalition of international best practices for dealing with the work from home uh, paradigm because this is now going to be with us for the next many, many decades. And therefore, international best practices could be a good idea. Learning number 11, it will be ethical for the relevant country, which identifies the most effective vaccine to fight against COVID-19, to share the information about the same in public good with the rest of the world. We don't want a world where one country has got a vaccine and only its people are protected, whereas other countries citizens are not protected. But with increasing nationalization coming in, with globalization increasingly getting evaporated, national interest and uh, national sovereignty will have far more supremacy and predominating factors. That being so, it will be imperative that we must have ethical standards of behavior for countries, at least for sharing of the latest information pertaining to the most effective vaccine against COVID-19. I think those are some key learnings that I thought I'd like to share with you. Uh, we are doing a couple of courses at Cyber Law University. This course on AI law, ethics, privacy and legalities by Cyber Law University go goes into more details about the ethical ramifications of the cyberspace and particularly in the context of coming of artificial intelligence per se. Also with the coming of uh, coronavirus, we have at Cyber Law University introduced a couple of uh, COVID-19 focused courses. These include cyber law, cyber crime, and cyber security in the coronavirus age, as also coronavirus, work from home, and legal issues. And in case if you want to focus more on cyber security, here are a couple of these other courses that Cyber Law University has on various aspects and nuances of cyber security law. So I think it's a very fertile ground uh, and a fertile point of history to be in as far as learnings from COVID-19 is concerned in, from the perspective of cyber ethics and also to start coming up with appropriate uh, response mechanisms and uh, thought processes on how to have ethical foundations to strengthen the current and future responses to COVID-19 and also to lay strong cyber ethical foundations for the new cyber world order that's going to come in. So I believe these learnings have to be the starting point. It's a starting of a new journey. This journey is uh, completely unknown to ourselves. Our uh, thought processes have been completely different so far. But having said that, <coughs> I believe that uh, we have to learn very quickly. The only thing that's constant in our life is going to be change. And I think uh, COVID-19 has told us that this change is going to be the only constant. If we have these broad cyber ethical learnings on the horizon within us, we internalize them make them the basis of foundations for further policy and regulatory actions and governmental approaches, I think one could be more well prepared from the perspective of all stakeholders to deal with the new challenges that are concerning the new cyber world order. So very interesting, fascinating time. And at this juncture, I would like to thank uh, Christoph for giving me the opportunity over to you and looking forward to the questions. Thanks, Christoph.